Hey there, welcome back, this is Lei. Commercial air flight has gone a long way since the first 3.5 seconds airborne test flight of the Wright brothers in 1903. Planes have been able to travel faster and further, carrying more passengers. However, it's quarter to 2022, as SpaceX is preparing for its first orbital flight this May, we at Curious Elephant want to remind all of you the vision that Elon Musk painted back in 2017. Suborbital space flights that carry people between offshore spaceports from major cities on Earth. Given that SpaceX has nailed landing for Starship, should we as consumers be prepared for the advent of a new transportation model, suborbital flight point to point on Earth? During the Starship event back in February 2022, Musk reaffirmed that the rocket is critical to establish a human presence on the moon and on Mars. However, he remarked that traveling to Mars is far from being some sort of escape hatch, as it will be extremely difficult and dangerous and tough. The past year saw a significant breakthrough in Starship development with a successful test of SN15 in a high altitude test, as well as Starship and Super Heavy Booster were stacked together for the first time, thus bringing a vision on on paper to reality. The next major step is to reach space. While the milestone for an orbital flight was delayed multiple times, for a suborbital flight though, SpaceX has almost readied itself for point-to-point -point travel on Earth. In 2019, Elon Musk revealed that the suborbital flight could only utilize the second stage, the Starship vehicle with no booster, to achieve a distance of approximately 10,000 kilometers or less. Point-to-point -point space travel is not a new concept, as many companies other than SpaceX are also working on that development, such as Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. The idea is to launch a rocket to travel beyond the Earth's atmosphere and we can significantly reduce fuel costs and flight duration. In fact, during a presentation in 2017, Elon Musk claimed that any SpaceX point-to-point -point travel to reach any city on Earth would take less than an hour. Although the concept seems to have substantial futuristic potential, it is not without challenges. Three major obstacles for the current development are safety, logistics, and cost. And let's go through them one by one. Safety without a doubt is the number one priority for any commercial mode of transportation. For Starship specifically, it has to perform flawlessly with no mistakes ever. We all surely remember the Columbia disaster where the shuttle broke up as it returned to Earth, killing the seven passengers on board. SpaceX has nailed the landing for SN15 once, but there's no enough data together about the safety margin of the Starship as for now. So what if it bursts out in flame like what happened to SN8 or blows up in a blazing explosion in the case of SN9? Imagine how a nightmare it would be. Commercial airplanes have become very common today. During peak times of the year, it's estimated that roughly 1 million people are in the skies at any given time. Without a doubt, regulators will require SpaceX to nail thousands of successful landings before we move on to mass transit by rocket. Even then, it would take many, many years for it to become become a reality when we factor in the cost for every launch. In addition, the weather can be one of, if not the most unpredictable factor when it comes to sending a rocket into space. We've seen so many delays and held ups for SpaceX test launches because of the weather on a regular basis. With current technology, we will still rely on pristine weather conditions for a launch unless there comes a day that we can control the weather. Secondly, logistics. We've all been there, stuck in traffic to get to our departure terminal. It is no joke to cope with the stress of catching a flight on time, let alone all the processes in between. For Starship, however, SpaceX revealed its plan to build offshore spaceports to launch the rocket for two reasons. First, there are really only two locations on America for SpaceX to launch its rockets. It doesn't really have a lot of options. It's basically here and Cape Canaveral, said Musk. It's quite a scene to launch a rocket. Hence, SpaceX requires a vast area of landing for any launch. Therefore, offshore spaceports seem like a good solution. Secondly, it's the last mile problem. It's the traffic jam to get to the airports, the congested security line, and etc. SpaceX plan to solve this by using the Hyperloop to transport from land to offshore spaceports. SpaceX didn't share much information on the plan, but Elon Musk responded in a tweet that refurbishing oil platforms was pretty much part of the plan. 
Construction for the floating platforms is already underway, as SpaceX acquired two oil rigs in 2021 named after the moons of Mars, Deimos and Phobos will act as offshore staging grounds for launch activities. No matter how exciting that might sound, Hyperloop has yet to see any public deployments. The projects have suffered from funding tremendously. While the initial estimation $6 billion was an understatement for the cost of designing, developing and constructing the system, a leaked financial document in 2016 revealed that Hyperloop would cost as much as $13 billion or $121 million per mile. We did a video on whether Hyperloop could become a thing a while ago. Thirdly, cost. For starters, earthbound trips wouldn't be so comfy. Musk suggested that every seat would be basic coach travel with no toilets or food area. It's basically an ICBM traveling at Mach 25 that lands. Starship is designed with a pressurized cabin volume of 825 cubic meters, bigger than an Airbus A380 jetliner. According to Sam Dinkin from the Space Review, suppose we have a crew of 31 and 853 passengers like an Airbus A380, factoring the cost of propellant, maintenance, and crew salary, each launch would cost more than 1 million, or an equivalent of 1,200 per ticket. The price tag is already more expensive than what Elon Musk claimed. He asked Estimated that each ticket would be about the same as full fare economy in an aircraft. Doing a quick Google search for the route from New York to Singapore, the ticket is about $500. With the current price tag, Starship could potentially lose its competitive edge over traditional airliners since airfare cost is one of the deciding factors for purchasing. Moreover, SpaceX is charging customers about $62 million for a Falcon 9 launch, assuming that the commercial point-to-point -point Starship trip would cost the same, which is unlikely given the biggest size of Starship earning just over 1 million per flight does not seem like a sound business choice, but factoring the full reusability of the new Starship, it's possible that 1 million per flight could be a profitable business for SpaceX. Now let's talk about the competitions. According to the International Civil Aviation Organization, airlines service up to 4.5 billion passengers annually. Therefore, even a small percentage of that market is a material revenue opportunity for any company. SpaceX is not the only major space company with a suborbital endeavor. Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic also shares the same vision of earthbound space travel. SpaceX has recently been awarded an additional $3.5 billion from NASA for Crew 7, 8, and 9 missions to the International Space Station. However, by the end of March 2022, SpaceX has announced its plan to end Crew Dragon manufacturing as the company turns its full attention to developing Starship. Perhaps the more significant competition for the suborbital transportation market is with supersonic airliners. One such entrant is Boom Supersonic, which rolled out the XB-1 prototype named Overture in November 2020. Capable of reaching up to Mach 1.7 in speed, the Overture is expected to be operational by 2029 and can carry up to 88 passengers at the flight range of 7,870 kilometers. Assuming that a Starship trip traveling at Mach 25 would take 31 minutes for a Sydney-Singapore flight path, it would take the Overture about three Three hours for the same journey. That's already cutting travel time by more than half of a typical plane ride, which would take 8 hours and 20 minutes. Although both transportation models, the supersonic and the suborbital travel face the same challenges, they approach it differently. Both methods produce supersonic booms, which can disrupt people on the ground and sometimes cause damage and injuries. Supersonic aircraft produce noise pollution along the entire flight path with varying intensities depending on speed, altitude, and other factors. Starship only causes supersonic booms during landing, as the shock waves created during liftoff move upward and away from the ground. Another challenge with Starship specifically is the safety factor in the event of engine failure. A traditional winged aircraft has the ability to glide in the air thanks to the airflow attached to the wings, providing the necessity lift for the aircraft. With Starship, however, how the mechanisms work is that it needs engine thrust to flip the vehicle vertical for landing. In addition, the Starship launch system has no in-flight abort capability whatsoever.
Looking past all the drawbacks above, suborbital traveling promises to cut travel times significantly shorter, arriving anytime on Earth in a matter of minutes. Before becoming a common mass transportation model, SpaceX still has a lot to figure out. Important but solvable technical issues aside, there are a few questions that we as customers need to ask ourselves, such as how safe is it? Will the appeal of short travel time be sufficient to outweigh the price of traveling? And perhaps most importantly, when is it going to happen? This video is supported by Brilliant. As many major space companies like SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, and Boom Supersonics are making progress on their goals of building new transportation systems, one common denominator for all is the extensive application of science and engineering. If you want to brush up your STEM skills, check out the courses from Brilliant to get started. Brilliant is a website and app that provides the best way to learn math, science, and computer science through interactive, hands-on courses. They recently released a new course called Everyday Math that will teach you fractions, data, and basic geometry in a great new perspective. If you're ever stuck, the course will provide explanations to see where you went wrong. My personal favorite though is the scientific thinking course where science is made simple. It's a fun way to explore the laws of physics and learn the principles of engineering through visually stimulating games. To get started with Brilliant for free, head to my description down below for a link to sign up. The first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, which gives you access to all courses. Thank you all for watching.